Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Walking Through Glass, the podcast with your host, Dr. Dina C. Brown. I'm so excited to come to you this Friday morning, what I'd like to call Fear Less Fridays, and share your daily dose of Dr. Vitamin D. But before I get into the message of the day, I just want to ask you, how are you doing? I mean, like seriously, how are you doing? And feel free, especially if you're by yourself or driving or listening in the car to answer. You see, I am learning more and more every day to take those pause breaks to just check in with me. And throughout the day, someone may or may not ask me, how am I doing? But that doesn't negate the fact that I should be asking myself How am I doing today? And this is not one of those life questions of let me analyze my bank account and the number of friends on my friends list and the number of likes I got on YouTube and Facebook. But it's about being present in the moment and checking in to just say, how are you doing? And I usually ask myself in that phrase, um, that phrase point. And so that's one of my tips that I've begun to use to really begin to center on what's really important, what's really critical um, for me. As I shared yesterday, if you haven't listened to yesterday's episode, I believe it was like episode 42, go back and listen to it. It's talking about doing self-care. As opposed to talking about it, it really begins to be about being about it. And in order to be about it, you have to consciously and intentionally think about it. And so I wanted to kick off the message today with that just nugget of stopping at that point. And it might be after you've gotten the kids off to school, after you've made your husband breakfast, after you poured your morning coffee. But sometime in the morning, at the start of your day, when you get two, three, even, my goodness, if it's luxurious, get five minutes by yourself to sit and ask yourself, take that breath and say, how am I doing? Girl, how are you doing? And um, as I think about that and roll into the focus for today's message, And I was so excited. I wanted to record it last night. But one of the goals is I'd like to bring it to you raw and live. And I said, okay, I'll wait till the morning. I'll sleep on it and process and see what else God brings to me to give to them in the morning. And so my morning today, as it was last night, and the message just resonated even more, was don't be afraid to let go. Don't. Be afraid to let go. Now, you know, like myself, there are things in your life that you're hoarding. And when I say hoarding, I mean that you haven't worn it in X amount of years. It doesn't fit anymore. It was from the third grade photo essay contest. And it was the very first. You fill in the blank. It is the 85,000 commemorative t-shirts that you're going to make into a blanket and all of that stuff that you're holding on to. And this is not some uh, what Marie Kondo type of message, but in a sense, it's, it is. It's not just the things that you hoard that are tangible. I'm going to speak to the things that you hoard that are mental. Those memories what I like to call those phantom limbs, which are experiences, memories, situations, and even interactions that you may or may not have with people that you know 
that you hang on to and yet you are afraid to let go because if you let go that means you have to grow that you might have to own a situation and own a memory I was reflecting on one of my own moments and memories that I had been hanging on to that um, is very hurtful and when you have children it's also very difficult when you like to reflect back on you know the moment and I'll share this very candidly this moment that um, probably was one of the most single most influential moments in the last I'd say five years of my life and I still get emotional about it because I know I'm still working through it because it still hurts but it was in owning my truth that I was able to let it go so in the course with of of divorcing uh, my ex-husband who's not a bad person he just wasn't the right person for me and although we agreed to part on amicable terms it wasn't so amicable um, at the end and one of the moments that um, um, was the impact it was going to have on Xavier and the fact that I held on to the fact that me making this decision this concrete decision that I needed to move out of that situation to truly continue to evolve to the better version of myself because you can't make a choice to live with someone that doesn't honor your value and who consistently speaks in a manner that is not enriching to your life and I'm not trying to be socially or politically correct but I want to be very particular about the words that I choose because in this season of my life I realize that the choices that have been made are my choices and someone doesn't do something to me okay it's the way that I receive it or I allow people to interact okay so that's why I'm being very particular about the word choice and I encourage you to be very particular about the choices in the words you use to de- describe situations that you're going through or that you're been that you've been in because words have power and they leave these indelible little marks on your subconscious which also masks sometimes your ability to grow and deal with things because you're in a state of denial and you're not letting go of the fantasy or the distortion or your part in your role in the situation because you're passing that on to somebody else okay so that's the that's that particular point so if you're wondering my goodness you know she's very being very articulate no I'm being very choosy and I've learned to be very choosy with my words especially when I'm talking about my situations and this has been a lot been the way that I've been able to shift into this new space into this bigger space to allow me to really manifest my dreams and live my life on purpose with purpose and really own my very own truth so and going back to the the situation the memory that was very difficult to let go and really holding on to for years the fact that um, I just kept feeling that everything that's happening with my son in regards to whether or not he's performing in school really well he was a very high performer and then now he's not performing like he used to and subconsciously I didn't realize for a long time I carried that burden of well if I would have just figured out a way to mask my unhappiness to mask you know um, my loneliness to mask my all the the negative feelings of anxiety and and just really indescribable 
um, emotions that were tearing me apart. I just used to say to myself, if I could just hold on a little longer and let him graduate and, and thrive because he's happy. But then recently when I was processing the power of resilience, I mean, like really, truly being resilient, I realized that and me making some very tough decisions. And I say tough, tough decisions because life wasn't all bad. It just wasn't right for me. And if it's not going to grow me, then I need to let it go. And so I let that marriage go. And because uh, in all intents and purposes, I couldn't grow into my next level of who I was in that situation. And that's maybe a story for the book or coming to one of the launch talks and walking through glass. And I'll share more of the details live. But I kept holding on to the fact that I blamed myself for all the the different things. Now, I believe that at different points in time, Xavier is still dealing with certain angry moments and and situations. But it doesn't mean that he doesn't love me as his mom, but maybe he doesn't understand the situation. Um, and I wasn't the one to enlighten him about everything that was going on because that wasn't his truth. It was mine. But what I did share with him is that we make choices sometimes as adults and that sometimes we do things and they're not the smartest things and they're just downright stupid because, you know, we react instead of respond, which is why I want him to really Um, learn and understand how to process through things so he could be a better responder and he can reduce the times that he's just going to react. And I realized in those conversations over the years and within the last, what, four, you know, five years is that his ability to be resilient and process things is a byproduct of the choices and decisions that I made as his mom to truly make sure that I was placing him in the situation that was going to be most conducive for him to grow. You see, one of the areas that was the most disturbing about my ex was the fact that um, he was verbally and mentally abusive, not physically. He made posture, but the harshness of his words and the mind games and that, that he would play, then it would coupled with, he took very good care, you know, of us in other, other ways. You know, he cooked for us. He cleaned for us. He, I didn't even, I don't think in the 11 years that we were together, I even washed a car. Okay. I mean, he was a very nurturing and caring person, but he also had his own demons that he was working with. And that's his truth. But I had a choice to make when things happened and whether I called him on it and his response was to explain it away. And then for myself to also explain it away. I didn't realize that I was compiling all of that into a mental mind movie and holding on to some baggage that again, when life happens and you get all shaken What's in you comes out. So even though you grow and you're doing things in new spaces, when life really gets tough, you begin to replay those old movies in your mind. It's like your mind has this muscle memory for times you doubted yourself and that you were afraid to really be you, that you were afraid to speak or that you wanted to cover down because you were conscious about the now. So when I speak to letting go and really getting quiet in these moments now to really do self-care, part of that journey for me is to sitting down and pulling out in the manner in which I can process, when I can process it, one of those memories and just really processing through the situation and freeing it to, to where it needs to go and belong. Because it doesn't need to burden my spirit anymore. It doesn't need to hold me back and keep me trapped in a space of, 
oh my gosh, you know, when I think back to this. Or when I'm analyzing or scaling to my next level that I'm bringing some operating systems and some bit information that is going to deter. Now, I learned some valuable lessons from that experience. And so what I do now is really process on the experience the lesson and how I grew from it. And before I really let go on this Friday, this fear less Friday, because it's, it's one of those things that fear exists and it's going to happen, but how can we reduce the fear? So when I say fearless, I don't mean that I'm not afraid. It means that I'm going to fear less. And by fearing less, I'm going to live more. Got that? By fearing less, I'm going to live more. And that's the life that I want to live. That's what walking through the glass is all about. It's about really beginning to take those situations that were designed or meant or put in our, our way to perhaps destroy us. I don't know because I don't know the intentionality of the other person or the situation. So I don't want to spend my time marinating on that. I want to process how to move through it, how to grow through it, how to thrive in spite of it. That's where I want to spend my time. And so I had to do a mind shift. And that's what walking through the glass is all about, is making the shift, the mind shift, to choose to live your very best life on your terms. It doesn't mean that you're going to get every single thing that you want. It doesn't mean that life is going to be perfect. It doesn't mean that trials and tribulations and situations are not going to plague your family. What it means is that you will fear less and thrive more by choosing to live through it, to grow through it. Because on the other side of that, is a paradigm shift and a new understanding of your truth. A newer understanding of your truth that will help you let go. And so those phantom limbs that I spoke about earlier no longer hurt you and pain you. And when you begin to talk about the situation and the memory that happened because it is part of your map. It's a part of your journey, but it doesn't need to be a pothole that keeps you trapped in it. So when you're processing through and you're thriving on, okay, not powering through it or just moving over it. I mean, thriving through, and that means dealing with and owning the truth. You're not carrying around what I call that excess baggage that's going to cost you. That's going to cost you from truly being happy. That's going to cost you from really taking advantage of unique opportunities. That's going to cost you relationships. I don't want anything that I've lived through and that's a part of my past to cost me any valuable moments of my future. And in me owning and being present today, I have to realize that there are some things that's a part of who I am. That's made me who I am that were very painful and hurtful, but yet they made me a better mother better thinker, a better friend. And it's that relationship capital and purpose capital that I can put on the table to get to the next level and thrive to the next level and build on a grander scale. So with that, I challenge you on this fear less Friday to fear less and thrive more and let go of anything everything 
people, places, situations, and mindsets that are not adding value to you. So have a phenomenal weekend. And I look forward to coming back to you on Monday with more of your daily dose of Dr. Vitamin D. And again, I do ask you to share, to share, 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 share. Because this message, especially this message, was not just about me. It's about transforming somebody's life who's stuck. And somebody needs this message today. So I challenge you also to don't be afraid to invite your friends and share it with five of your most amazing friends. And then let me know what you think, okay? I won't even be afraid of what you have to say, whether you love it or not. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being part of my sunshine. And I am going to sign off. This is your host, Dr. Dina C. Brown. And remember, you can listen to Walking Through Glass, the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Music Play, Podbean. And you know what? Just Google it and listen and share. Have a great Friday. Bye-bye.